This is Mac OS Ken. Apple's meet and greet, meeting not included, a couple of Apple TV Plus stories, and have you seen Scott Forstall lately? It's Wednesday, the 24th of February, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Sun Basket. Delivering oven ready meals that are fast, fresh, and delicious. Get $35 off your order using promo code MacOSCAN at sunbasket.com slash MacOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Headspace makes it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works on your schedule anytime, anywhere. It's the app and the variety of programs available. They've got mindfulness workouts like actual physical workouts, a meditation for when you're out walking, SOS sessions for high stress moments, even guided meditations to help you sleep. I'm a fan of the walking one. I appreciate the SOS sessions. And the basic program has actually gotten me to a place where I can take a moment, calm myself, and focus, even without the app. Headspace is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash macOSCan. That's headspace.com slash macOSCan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash macOSCan today. Apple held its annual shareholders meeting on Tuesday, virtual of course, hashtag these times in which we live. Apple Insider had the company CEO saying he is greatly optimistic about Apple's future. I know, it was quite a surprise. Business done during the meeting, including approving Apple's board of directors, please welcome back to the table James Bell, Tim Cook, Al Gore, Andrea Young, Art Levinson, Ron Sugar, and Sue Wagner. There were also four proposals to be decided, two supported by Apple and two opposed. Not surprisingly, they went the way the company wanted. According to the report, the passing proposals were the reappointment of Apple's public accounting firm for auditing purposes and the approval of Apple's executive compensation. The two failed proposals, both submitted by shareholders, focused on amending proxy access for director nominations and improvements to Apple's executive compensation program. Tightly controlled is how some in the chat room of yesterday's Mac OS Can Live referred to the Q&A portion of the call. I did not get to hear that, but I did read a transcript posted by Philip Elmer DeWitt's Apple 3.0. Basically the way it reads, shareholders tossed Tim Cook softballs, and he knocked him out of the park. Questions like why is Apple speaking up now on privacy? What are Apple's thoughts on mergers and acquisitions? How does Apple plan to improve on its diversity and inclusion? And what is Apple's identity today? If it sounds like I'm being flip about the call, yeah, I get that a lot. I will say some of Cook's answers did ring with inspiration. Let me give you part of one of them. Asked what he sees as Apple's most challenging obstacle ahead for 2021, Cook started by saying he doesn't see obstacles so much as opportunities. That said, he said those opportunities will have to be handled with care. Recounting some of the obstacles or opportunities faced last year, Cook wrapped his answer by saying, After the year we have all gone through, I am greatly optimistic about the future. And for all of us at Apple, we're thinking deeply, as always, about how we can help our communities emerge from this stronger, how recovery from this pandemic can be fair and equitable, and how all of that can be helped by world-class technology that puts our humanity at its heart. Because he can knock them out of the park. 
If you'd like more on the question and answer portion, you can read the transcript at Apple 3.0. You can also have a listen to Tuesday's Mac OS Can Live because that's what I tackled on Tuesday's Mac OS Can Live. In Apple shareholder meetings, CEO Cook sort of dismissed concerns about government interference in Apple's business. Outside of the meeting, there was news that the government may be looking to interfere in Apple's business. Well, investigate it anyway. Another piece from Apple Insider highlights a report from The Information that says the U.S. Department of Justice is eyeing sign-in with Apple in response to developer complaints. That's part of a broader antitrust investigation, according to the report. The Cupertino company bills sign-in with Apple as a more private way to sign in to third-party apps and websites using an existing Apple ID. Soon after introducing the option, the piece says Apple also started requiring apps that have account sign-in options from Google, Facebook, and Twitter to include sign-in with Apple as well. This has apparently upset some developers. They have apparently complained. Now the DOJ is apparently looking into it, along with a slew of other issues. According to the piece, the DOJ is examining Apple's control over its app marketplace, the commission it charges on app and in-app purchases, and whether it restricts third-party app access to systems like location services that its own apps are able to use. Aside from pointing out the privacy benefits of sign-in with Apple, the company declined to comment for the information report. Apple Pay has hit another country. Cult of Mac says the contactless payment solution has landed in Mexico. Apple's site says the feature works with City Banamax, Benord, American Express, and MasterCard in Mexico. A number of chain stores and restaurants also offer support, including 7-Eleven, P.F. Chang's, and Chili's. Apple's got new guidance for developers on the app privacy nutrition labels. Mac Rumors says rules surrounding data types like email, text messages, and gameplay content have been expanded to make it easier for developers to understand and comply with the requirements. Makes one wonder whether they were. The piece has Apple telling developers additional details have been published on completing your App Store privacy labels including more information about data types, such as email or text messages and gameplay content. You'll also find more information about data collected in web views and data that may be entered by users within documents or other file types. And again, one wonders whether this was a ramp-up that had been planned all along. It's also possible that, allowed to self-report, developers aren't reporting as much as Apple would like them to. Mac Rumors points readers back to last month's piece from the Washington Post that had the paper finding apps skimming much more information than their App Store privacy labels indicated. Add another interesting machine to Apple's refurbished offerings. Just one day after tossing the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro into the like-new store, iDownload blog says the M1 MacBook Air has also landed there. The company's knocking the roughly regular 15% off the asking price. Normally 1000 bucks to start, the entry-level refurbished MacBook Air is currently going for $849. The higher-spec machines are going for higher prices, though still at decent discounts. You can see what's available in Apple's refurbished store. More news in a moment, but first a word from Sun Basket, delivering oven-ready meals that are fast, fresh, and delicious. I was just looking over Sun Basket's menu for next week. Whether you're into basic comfort food or lots of varied tastes, Sun Basket's got something for you. From meal kits like Mushu pork bowls with hoisin sauce to fresh and ready meals like pappardelle pasta with wilted spinach, sweet peas, and fresh ricotta, or shrimp Diablo tacos with roasted peppers and queso fresco. Did I say or? I meant and. And the fresh and ready meals are super convenient. All you have to do is heat and eat, which means no prep and no mess. And here's what else is great. 
fresh and ready meals are just $8.99, so they're good for your body and your budget. Everything I've had from Sun Basket has been fantastic, but you should try them yourself. And you can try them for less. Right now, Sun Basket is offering $35 off your order when you go right now to sunbasket.com slash macOSken and enter promo code macOSken at checkout. That's sunbasket.com slash macOSken and enter promo code macOSken at checkout for $35 off your order. Sunbasket.com slash macOSken and enter promo code MACOSCAN. We now know what happened to some of the money pledged by Apple for the fight against COVID-19. CNET says $10 million went toward 15 million sample collection kits made by Copen Diagnostics. According to the piece, the testing kits are being used by hospitals to collect specimens of the disease to aid research in the search for better testing and treatment options. It wasn't just money Apple kicked in, but also know-how. To ramp up production and shipping, CNET says, Copen hired nearly 250 new employees and opened an entire new facility in California. The team worked alongside Apple engineers, product designers, and operations professionals to set up a dedicated supply chain that resulted in a 4,000% increase in its test kit production since April of last year. Speaking on Apple's behalf, COO Jeff Williams was quoted as saying, We are proud our advanced manufacturing fund is supporting companies like Copen, who are playing a critical role in the fight against COVID-19, and assisting healthcare professionals and communities across the country. Tweeting Tim's tweeting again. Apple Insider says Apple CEO has hit the Twitter service, voicing support for the Equality Act. If you don't know what that is, the piece explains, saying the Equality Act, introduced to amend existing civil rights laws, bans LGBTQ discrimination across multiple areas of American life. Currently, there are protections for discrimination against gender identity and sexual orientation in some, but not all, states. This bill would extend protections from the Civil Rights and Fair Housing Acts to LGBTQ people across all states in the U.S. Second time around for this legislation. It was first introduced in 2015 when it got Apple support. As for support this time, Cook's Twitter message said... The Equality Act reflects in law the fact that every person deserves dignity and respect, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, at work, at home, and in the public square. We strongly support its passage, and we encourage Congress to come together and get it done. International Women's Day is week after next, and your Apple Watch has a challenge for you. Or it will on International Women's Day. iMore says users need only complete a 20-minute workout to get the usual virtual doodads. Those include a special medallion and a few virtual stickers depicting a female gender symbol, two women standing while waving, a woman in a wheelchair waving, and an animated 2021 sticker with purple and red colors. International Women's Day is Monday, the 8th of March, Plan accordingly. The press gets to go to Apple Yoido today, and you get to go on Friday. You know, if you're in Seoul, South Korea, since that's where the store is. I told you earlier this week of the planned press tour. At the time, Apple had not said when the store would open to the public. Now it has. 9 to 5 Mac had the company saying yesterday that the store will open this Friday, the 26th of February at 10 a.m. local time. Signs of life for Jon Stewart's show for Apple TV+. Plus. If you've forgotten what that is, The Hollywood Reporter says the still-untitled show, which will feature single-topic episodes, will explore subjects that are part of the national conversation and Stewart's own advocacy work. Sounds like they're going for a mix of serious and funny, based on a couple of announced hires. 
CBS Evening News investigative journalist Brenda Adhikari has been hired as executive producer and showrunner. She brings the serious, while head writer Chelsea Devantes should bring the funny. Funny story, she started her writing career on the show that Stewart was supposed to do, but never did for HBO. Other credits include the Comedy Central series The Opposition with Jordan Klepper and Tina Fey's upcoming series for Peacock, Girls 5 Eva. No hints in the piece on when the show will premiere. I'm just happy to hear it's still in the works. Paley Fest LA has set its schedule for the spring, and Ted Lasso is on it. Paley Fest is a really cool thing that most people can't go to because... It's in one place, and most people are not. Of course, it'll be virtual this year. Hashtag these times in which we live. The event features casts and creators of various shows, viewing clips, and participating in moderated discussions. Variety says the last day of the five-day event this year will be a panel discussion for Ted Lasso, Featuring co-creator and executive producer Bill Lawrence, co-creator, executive producer, and actor Jason Sudeikis, executive producer and actor Brendan Hunt, writer and actor Brett Goldstein, and cast members Hannah Waddingham, Jeremy Swift, Juno Temple, Nick Muhammad, and Phil Dunster. It'll be moderated by actor and comedian Patton Oswalt. Other shows featured this year include Evil... The Good Doctor, Lovecraft Country, The Queen's Gambit, What We Do in the Shadows, Big Sky, The Late Late Show with James Corden, and a 20th anniversary reunion for Six Feet Under. Paley Fest LA runs the 26th of March through the 1st of April. Paley Center members and City Card members get day of access. Panels will start being made available for public viewing beginning the 30th of March. And finally today, have you seen Scott Forstall? Youngish looking guy, spiky hair, used to work for Apple. See, Epic Games would like to call him to testify in its case against Apple. And Apple either can't or won't say where to find him. Foss Patton says, Epic says, Apple had said that it would get the former iOS software exec to turn up and answer questions. But according to Epic, according to the site, Apple now suggests that it never suggested it could compel Mr. Forrestal to appear for a deposition after promising for well over a month it would provide a date for Mr. Forrestal's deposition. At some point, a deposition had been tentatively scheduled for the 11th of February, but the week before, Apple revealed that Mr. Forrestal had not responded to Apple's inquiries or confirmed that he will appear for a deposition. Epic says Apple gave the games maker a P.O. box and a Twitter handle for Forstall. Apple also represented that it was not authorized to share Mr. Forstall's phone number, according to Epic, but later stated that it did not believe that it was in possession of Mr. Forstall's current phone number. In fairness, they didn't part on great terms. Now Forstall's in the wind, as far as Epic is concerned. Apple probably figures he's fine where he is. So I think we're going to call in a few minutes for this week. It'll kick back up again on Monday. In the meantime, Mac OS Ken Live goes live again today, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ken Ray. Catch it live or on replay there. You can also subscribe to the audio podcast Mac OS Can Live, wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Get a free one month trial at headspace.com slash Mac OS Can. This show is also sponsored by Sunbasket. Get $35 off your order using promo code MacOSCAN at sunbasket.com slash MacOSCAN. 
advertising handle by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways, info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.